though in my view quite late but nevertheless it is here to set up a management system as per international best practices so to take it forward uh, i had opportunity to meet virtually dr arti khosla and then we started talking about it and we said why don't we do a webinar to create more awareness and understanding of the standard so that more and more institutions universities colleges etc etc can adopt it yeah okay so let's begin so the agenda is that you know the webinar participation protocol is you know we had about 105 odd participants from about 20 countries right from algeria to israel to uk to switzerland singapore mauritius oman india saudi very beautiful fantastic response for that so at the moment all of you would be muted except the panelist you can submit the question whenever you want using the chat box so i'll start the program with a very quick introduction and then we'll have a panel discussion q and a and close just to let you know this program is being uh, shown live actually uh, through the uh, youtube program so just be aware of that yeah first and foremost i have arti khosla she is the founder and chief executive of center of assessment of excellence in india it's a really metro proud and pride that she represents india in the iso technical committee 232 which are responsible for developing this standard and she of course is member of various central and state level government accreditation and she has been championing and is a advocate of this standard next we have is dr ashok chopra he is the associate professor with the university of amity amity university in dubai highly qualified certified six sigma chartered fellow and more than uh, above and all that he is not only a pure academician he has done tremendous work in industry in all roles consulting and also now he shares his experience to these students here in dubai and he has won many medals gold silver cash prizes so very delighted to have him over here then we have dr ahmed baksh chief executive for national indian department and king abdul aziz very prestigious large university in saudi arabia now his interests are very 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 interesting in fact he specializes in lot of these futuristic technologies knowledge bases like organization development stochastic objectives and cluster i myself don't know most of them hopefully one day i'll have opportunity to meet and listen and learn from him welcome dr baksh and then we got aisha masood she is the founder management trustee for oasis international school it was her passion it was her vision to set up a school and with her dedication she has about 1000 students now and she is also done very great grassroots work is to set up cambridge professional development qualifications to support the continuous learning and development of teachers and leaders now we had a lot of thought on whom we bring on the panel to give maximum value to all of you so we got uh, people who develop the standard people who have industry experience and people who have also implemented this standard and gone through this journey to share their experience challenges and the impact and the benefits they have so with this i stop the presentation here and i start the conversation with few questions we have hopefully this will have some you know insights for you to begin with my first question is for dr ashok chopra typically what kind of challenges 
and educational organization experiences. Kindly have very brief responses, crisp up to the point, please. Dr. Chopra, please. Doctor, we cannot hear you. Hello? Okay, I don't know what happened, whether it's a technology issue or a physical presence. Can we go to Ms. Aisha Masood with the same question? I yeah, uh, sure. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Sunil. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me here to share my experiences about uh, you know my educational institutions and how the ISO standards have helped us uh, you know reach the uh, higher benchmark. Being an educational institution today is is not an easy thing. You just cannot open an educational institution and expect everybody to join. Today, there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of benchmarking that happens. And parents also have become educated and aware of uh, what they need for their child. So um, we have to be on par, if not better, with whatever is there uh, in the market. Or I mean, I wouldn't call it a market in, in the society or the community to educate the child. And uh, then we start with a core ideology and we start with a mission and vision. And the greatest challenge the uh, education institution faces is to actually cascade this mission and vision to the last employee. And uh, the second challenge would be divisions of roles and responsibilities among the huge staff that goes into making a school. And then uh, we have to make sure that what happens in the leadership team and their meetings uh, inside four walls gets transformed into the classroom and make sure that the the you know the end product the last stakeholder that is the student gets the benefit of all your your mission and vision then uh, another uh, of course challenge is to retain those students retain staff members because attrition is a huge issue there are a lot of schools with a lot of competition and you know you have staff jumping from here and there and this is a human resource industry it's not a product which you know you can just leave and go away into another industry the child gets used to one teacher and if that teacher leaves, then the child gets, you know, it's very difficult for the child to get used to another teacher. So attrition is something we need to control. Keeping up the standards that are given by the state and, and uh, whichever body we are affiliated to, that's also a great challenge. And also having consistency in its ideologies and in, you know, uh, and in a system which is consistent and uh, throughout the from the principal yeah. to the gatekeeper, everybody should have the same ideology. These are the Super. challenges that yeah. we face. Beautiful, very well said, uh, the, Dr. Aisha. Uh, I am back. Uh, Ashok, yeah. Please, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. See, I, I feel the biggest challenge uh, today the education faces, according to me, is the expectation of the industry because industry is not expecting you to just produce a, a memorized student who can reproduce uh, as it is. Another challenge which I feel which an academic institution faces is the electronic medium has become so strong that it is very difficult for us to have a student in the class where we say, look, I am going to turn my PPT and you learn it. He says, I can, I can go to Google and find out I don't need your expertise on that. So I think evolving and involving student both are very, very important as far as biggest challenge for the educational institution is concerned. Uh, thirdly, 80% uh, of the jobs which are going to be there in the next five years are yet to be created. So we don't know where the education is going to uh, you know, merge with industry in a right manner, which is the biggest challenge I feel the educational institution face as far as uh, bringing student to the industry level is concerned. Another challenge which we are facing is because of the COVID, students have a lot of new institutions and new bodies which were there earlier as a consulting company have come into education. They feel they can offer better as compared to the universities. So uh, another uh, aspect is the technology disruption because we are keeping a lot of segments in the education which are open, not meant for bigger players, where small players are coming they just offer something 
which is required by the industry, student picks up that diploma or a particular certification and gets into the industry. So I feel there is a huge lot of challenges educational institutions are facing as far as uh, uh, organized universities or institutions are concerned. I feel there is going to be a disruption again in this sector also, where I feel the way of teaching, the way of education, and probably the output or the outcome which is being offered to the student itself is going into a lot of transformation. That's my submission, sir. Yeah, very interesting, sir. Very, you brought the industry, governance, retention of student, knowledge delivery methods and stuff, beautiful. <clears throat> now let's, looking at these challenges, ISO organization developed the standard 2101. Let's ask Aarti Khoslaji, she is a member of this uh, subcommittee, why was this standard developed in the first place? That's a very interesting question, Sunilji. And uh, I think Mrs. Aisha and uh, Dr. Uh, Chopra, both of them have very well articulated the challenges. So we all understand that education is a fundamental part of society. And this is one sector where the effective outcomes can ensure an enhanced productivity and high quality for all the other business sectors. In fact, for the whole mankind. So the quality of an educational institution has always been a concern for everyone. And till now, we never had a common management system standard or a tool or a best practice which can be used to evaluate the degree to which an educational organization meets the requirements of not only the learners, but also all the other stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, whether the learning and development sector or schools, colleges, universities, there has always been a critical and a continuous need for us to evaluate our own systems and the systems to be recognized by an independent third party so that we have that confidence in our own system, our own processes. Uh, this gives confidence not only to the top management, but to all the other stakeholders. Even the well-performing institutions need to carry out this kind of a holistic evaluation. There are a lot of areas for improvement, which in the absence of a regular monitoring or a regular audit mm -hmm. assessment, they go unnoticed. For example, uh, what is the impact of uh, the, our courses? What is the impact evaluation of our courses? How much we've been able to achieve the learning outcomes? Mm -hmm. How much uh, appropriate our resources are? And when I say resources, I'm also including the competence needs of our manpower. Our risk management is generally not uh, adequate. Yes. The stakeholder engagement is not appropriate. We don't take ownership and accountability of the work. Okay. And there are a lot of other areas like uh, data security, ethical practices, and uh, a couple of others. So ISO took up this task and uh, the uh, proposal to develop the standard was first approved in the in early 2014 and for around five years because we were making a standard for the education sector so it was a huge task wow. and uh, the project committee called pc 288 which itself consists of around 140 expert members from 44 participating countries plus there are around 14 observer countries also so there was a huge involvement of the UK and uh, much of mainland Europe, Australia, Canada, uh, many South American and Asian countries. So in 2017, the draft was ready and it was made available for feedback. And finally, uh, the standard was published in uh, May 2018. So mm -hmm. I think uh, this, this was the reason why ISO had taken up this task. And a very important aspect is that the standard directly contributes to three uh, sustainable development goals. Goal number four, that's quality education. Goal number 10, that's uh, reducing inequalities. And goal number 11, that is sustainable cities and communities. Beautiful. Very nice. Very well said. Thank you so much. Now, general you know, focus is that this standard is applicable for universities and schools. Is that so or it can be also adopted other learning delivery organizations? What kind of organization can consider adopting this standard? So, uh, you know, each and every educational organization, whether a formal or an informal one, uh, can go in for it. Mm -hmm. The requirements of ISO 21001 standard, they are mostly generic in nature and they are intended to be applicable to any organization that is using a curriculum 
to support the development of competence through either mm-hmm. teaching or learning or research so these organizations regardless of the type size or method of delivery so now even if you are doing your teaching learning or your training through an online mode or an offline mode you can very well apply this standard absolutely uh, similarly those organizations which are a part of a larger organization whose core business is not education mm-hmm. example a professional training department uh-huh. so uh, you know all kinds of uh, the teaching and training institutions like example schools higher education including colleges universities then we have the coaching uh, segment we have the mentoring segment we have the stand alone uh, training institutions we have a small lnd vertical of a big uh, corporate so all these can implement and the stakeholders that can benefit uh, mm-hmm. from the implementation of the standard of course learners worldwide mm-hmm. and then we have uh, the educators the trainers the staff the management of course yeah. the regulatory bodies your vendors yeah. the employers and as uh, dr chopra mentioned industry industry is going to be an important stakeholder yeah. Yeah. and society at large absolutely very well said in fact the standard in one of the annexures at the end has listed the stakeholders and interestingly i found even the government the government's one of the main job is to uplift the society through creating a knowledge base and enhancing the education in countries like india very well said now let me move out to the leadership aspect of that you know this is not something it's left to the lower level management so why should a leadership of an organization commit itself to adopt this standard So my question is to Dr. Ahmed Baksh from King Abdulaziz University, Saudi Arabia. Yes, this is uh, a great question. The educational organization leader should adopt the standard, uh, actually, to ensure the consistency of educational process. This is being said uh, at, at the first place. Also, to ensure the quality standard of educational process. Mm-hmm. are alike within like multiple section of similar courses and of course the quality of education product are being delivered uh, similarly mm-hmm. um, in addition to adopting the the standard we should ensure the alignment of organizational educational objective yeah. with the need of all interested party and business environment good very nice thank you Uh, same thing dr chopra what are your views about you know md university i don't think is certified to ums yet but what does why should an organization leadership commit itself to it what are your thoughts dr chopra uh, thank you mr sunil see uh, as a university or any other profession or a business i am i'm taking both leadership has to have a full control in terms of uh, where i am leading to because as i said technology disruption can really change the entire market scenario i'll give a small example nobody ever thought that the transportation business can be done without having your own transport and uber proved it yes uber proved to an extent that you don't have to have a fleet you don't to have a taxi operation or a transportation system you can just use the technology and can still bring the world together absolutely so leadership plays an important role to understand where a particular profession or an industry is going and if absolutely. i don't change and if i don't update myself i may lose this where i have a leadership and we have seen such a big big names are not there today jvc nokia uh, Agfa, uh, you know, uh, all these names, J- uh, Sharp. We don't see these names because they did not had a control as far as from the leadership is concerned. So I think a uh, uh, standard like ISO can always keep their leaders in check in terms of what they need to do in the changing industry scenario. Mm-hmm. And I feel a, a standard like ISO twenty one thousand is an ideal solution. or any other accreditation which you feel there are so many accreditation but iso is a very very comprehensive and i feel yeah, yeah. all is going and should be going for it that's Super. my point 
yeah beautiful thank you so much you see i also understand that this standard is also available for early childhood education that's really not easy actually for little children also that's very interesting so aisha what's your thoughts on this uh mr sunil it's really exciting to know that iso 21001 has a certification for the early childhood education and mm -hmm. when we started off we were a little nervous on how it would go uh, for our school so we uh, we wanted a proof of concept so we did it for the school and i think that the first opportunity i would go in for the early childhood ed um, mm -hmm. education certification also this would ensure that the ri children's rights are respected according to the un's convention of uh, the rights of a child mm -hmm. and the educational organizations can ensure facilities individual plans safety security and uh, to see the and prevention of child abuse beautiful so beautiful. every every member can be trained for that and there can be consistency throughout the organization for that yeah. uh we we did not do this earlier because we were in two different campuses but now i'm sure we really need it because even it goes into details of uh, picking up and dropping the child it goes into you know actually educating all the stakeholders and how a child should be cared for and what are the learning needs of a child and what are the safety needs and uh, you know for that uh, for that age group will definitely have different standards than for the older age group so i think it's a very important thing beautiful very nice i recently learned abu dhabi government has established early childhood authority also similarly let's listen to arti because she was involved in the development what are your thoughts about early childhood education system adopting these yeah uh, sure uh, mr sunil so uh, also i am very happy to share that uh, the government of india is uh, has recently launched its uh, national education policy it's a new mm -hmm. education policy and after more than 3 decades we've uh, kind of uh, you know amended our policy so early childhood education has got a special mention and a special place in this whole thing uh, early childhood education uh, if it's done in the right way it can certainly help in developing a lifelong love for learning in children mm -hmm. uh, in fact this is the most crucial phase in a child's life because all the developmental needs like social emotional physical cognitive then we need to ensure safety of the children uh, they are all very high during this time and all this mm -hmm. has a direct effect on the kind of adult the child would grow up to be yeah. so this stage can never be taken for granted in fact most of the diverse learning abilities of the children can also be identified at this stage only Beautiful. so the learning needs to be completely individualized and as uh, mrs aisha also mentioned safety of the children individual learning plans how you receive the child how you deliver the child i think every stage when the child is in the school is important so the whole system plays an important role and the effectiveness of outcomes at this stage they are correlated with the effectiveness of management systems and engagement of all stakeholders so parents also play a very important role grandparents play an important role school authorities everybody and probably that is the reason why iso has included an additional nx for uh, the early childhood education so i always tell people spending resources to strengthen your early childhood educational organization should actually be looked at as an investment not as a cost beautiful very well said because planting the seeds for the future development interestingly standard also talks about you know learners with special needs you see i mean sadly there are a lot of people in the society here we call them people of determination or children of determination what additional requirements and uh, infrastructure etc an organization should need to invest in rtg for learners with special needs yeah so uh, before i talk about the requirements that have been laid down in the standard i would like to mention this is for the first time any certification or previously we had lot of accreditation standards yeah. this is for the first time a standard has a special mention about the uh, learners with special needs 
So uh, the standard uh, lays a lot of emphasis on ensuring that you have adequate resources and trainings in place mm -hmm. to support the accessibility in your learning environment. There's reasonable accommodation provided to the learners with special needs so that you can have equitable access to facilities as well as the educational uh, environment, just as the other learners. They don't feel you know, sidelined. They feel as much a part of the organization as a general child would feel, a normal child would feel. So uh, giving specialized trainings to your educators, the ones who are coming in contact with these learners with special needs, so that they understand the differentiated instruction, they understand assessments, they understand instructional scaffolding, and uh, also the institutions can give an access to a network of the specialists. Yes. Uh, we as institutions can show some flexibility. We can support the learner co-construction of the learning process mm -hmm. based on his skills, based on his abilities, based on his interests. And different approaches can be adopted. For example, the adaptive instruction, accelerated or enriched content. Uh, you can allow a child with special needs an enrollment into two distinct programs or uh, maybe two distinct educational organizations. Mm -hmm. also. We can have individually tailored measures for them. We can make Beautiful. adjustments or modifications in our curriculum. So Beautiful. there are a lot of things that can be done. Very they, can, nice, yeah. they can even be linked to the workplace opportunities so that whatever yeah. skill and ability they have, yeah. they can utilize. Beautiful. Very nice. Very happy to know that. In fact, uh, uh, I had opportunity to work with the Dubai police and people are determination. It's really very good. You know, the standard has identified and brought into the limelight and focus on this. Excellent. I'm sure a lot of educational organizations have to work on this to get it complied with. You, Artiji, briefly mentioned oh. about even a department or a function within an organization can adopt this. For example, a bank or a manufacturing company or a trading organization. Uh, can you just very briefly tell us about more about it, how a department within an organization not focused on learning and development can do that. Because organization main job is, let's say, healthcare provider or a manufacturer of Pepsi Cola, you know. So just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. So we have recently, in fact, in the last two years, we have certified a couple of uh, LND departments of various organizations. In fact, I, I can see a few uh, familiar faces. We have some people from the Dubai Islamic Bank LND department, and uh, I feel very proud to mention that they were the first ones in the whole world to uh, get an accredited certificate. So they've implemented the standard in a very beautiful manner. We all understand that in a business environment, you know, upskilling has become a necessity. We are preparing our employees for the future of work. And now the tech has taken over, so the learning has changed. And uh, besides upgrading their professional skills, we have to make them future ready. So uh, now the LND or the training organizations cannot merely have just a training calendar and a pool of trainers and their job is yeah. done. Uh, in fact, they have the task to develop great leaders and resilient teams now. Yes. Uh, all the time and resources that the businesses are allocating to training, I think it becomes all the more important to get the training right the first time itself. Yeah. So through this standard, the LND verticals can ensure that the upskilling needs of their employees are appropriately identified. Uh, clear strategies are prepared, they are defined, they are aligned with the vision and mission of the organization. And instead of offering a one-time job specific training, the organizations can provide all employees with ongoing learning and development. Yes, options. Sir. Beautiful. I mean, that's a competitive edge. In fact, uh, we have a professor, Dr. Ala Jarad here from UK. I mean, he has uh, published a lot of literature and books on organization learning. So that's very good to know this, yeah. Uh, let, since you talked about uh, training and all that, let me go to Dr. Chopra. What kind of training programs do you think an organization will need to adopt this standard? Uh, thank you, Mr. Sunil. In fact, uh, if you ask me, I think uh, each and every component of uh, education, be its trainers, be its the academicians, be its 
you know the relevant stakeholder within the organization outside the organization i think everybody needs to be addressed one of the reason we need to address this i will correlate to a macroeconomic parameter which i am going to explain now see in year 2000 the world population was something around 6 billion people which was growing at the net birth rate of 2.5% per annum which has now come down to 1.7 and come 2050 i feel uh, by the time the population growth will come down to 0.5 so parents are stakeholders are everybody is concerned about everything today and because of their concern i feel each and every person within the organization the relevant suppliers all the members in the supply chain everybody needs to be given a training as far as iso is concerned so that we know the relevant product which is coming out of the university out of the educational institution out of the training and development institute is worth competing in the market as i said the population growth is coming down so people will have lot of importance so each and every aspect a to z will be responsible to be trained as far as this particular standard is concerned beautiful very well said uh, i would just like to add a small point over here if we have a minute uh, sure so uh, now as an impact of covid 19 we all understand that organizations across the world they will have to make an extra effort businesses have gone down so eoms is one standard that can also guide you to review your existing systems uh, in terms of the whole learning ecosystem mo most of us now uh, need just in time learning which can fit into our busy schedule so instead of having very elaborate courses maybe our regular reviews monitoring and auditing system can tell us that our teams must be given such platforms where they can have micro learning more of synchronous as well as asynchronous online learning so i think effective monitoring review and audit system is something which is going to help the people as well as businesses stay updated and grow together yes if Very i well can add uh, if i can yeah. add so that this yeah. uh, this management system has a, a great uh, social responsibility attached to it yes so even if we if it changes completely to an online scenario we can do social and emotional learning through the online platform and include uh, you know uh, students uh, of any uh, age group with no. special education needs through this uh, thing and and make sure that you know nobody is left behind and every stakeholder absolutely yeah yeah this is fantastic you know earlier the products were made all over the world now because of this uh, covid has brought digitization and virtual working at the center stage we are all in a borderless world now you know we can share knowledge collaborate and work on uh, this uh, as a iso certified university or a school what are the major steps you would have taken dr aisha uh, well uh, we uh, in the beginning we created a core team that includes the you know we call it the strategic the strategic leadership team in our school yeah. and uh, uh, we we first conducted an awareness program and got the buy in of the leadership team in the beginning mm -hmm. and then we made a project plan and we defined dates and timelines and allocated responsibilities and then we requested a coae to do an internal auditor training program for mm -hmm. our core team so that so we uh, our core team uh, has members across the board from from facilities to special needs you know you have the academic team the admin <laughs> team the facilities team and the special needs team Interesting. every one, every uh, team had a representative in our training program and i must thank uh, arti and coa uh, and arti in particular for giving us wonderful training which brought about an awareness for the need for developing such standards which ensures consistency in all, uh, in everything that we do absolutely and, uh, this this training also helps us helped us a lot to conduct internal audits of our school we have now completed more than 3 cycles of internal audit Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and we continue to improve our processes we also involved other <laughs> stakeholders like learners parents teachers vendors mm -hmm. and support staff improved our feedback and mechanism uh, feedback mechanism and we brought in risk management into every process 
Beautiful. And uh, we have finished our stage one and stage two surveillance audited, uh, audit yeah. and have got yeah, come yeah. out with flying colors, I can say. Yeah, super. Beautiful. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Baksh, I mean, since your university is also certified to 21,001, uh, can you briefly share with us how did you go about adopting this standard and attaining certification? Yes, sure. The training that uh, required for implementing the standard, uh, first, at first level awareness is the important training needed. Yeah. So, so that the educational organization as the university can identify the gaps, I mean, in, in our system versus what the standard requires. Uh, like a second important thing in the training is the internal auditor. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it could be like for the leadership or the core team who are, I mean, uh, working on uh, carrying out this standard. So they can be effectively conducting uh, the internal audit through all the process. Mm -hmm. And of course, like having all of these get by the attention of the top management and in the involvement of all the stuff within the department and, and uh, involvement department here. Yes. Beautiful. Excellent. Thank you so much. I know it's a big journey, not an easy journey. And even just identifying processes is not easy. Great work for laying the foundation. While doing so, I'm sure you would have come across some challenges. You know, it may not be a smooth sailing because we are talking of systems thinking, systems we are working. Whereas a lot of people think education is so creative. Systems and discipline ties down. So briefly, can you share with us a couple of challenges you experienced while adopting this standard, uh, Dr. Ahmed? Yes. Uh, the importance of adopting or uh, the importance of adopting like such a standard is um, the approved standard in education ensure better quality in the program offer and of course better repetition to our I mean uh, department and organization at the end. Having said that the ISO 21001 make the educational organization in a competitive advantage position yeah. that helps a lot especially for a collaboration between organization and uh, you know we are in a situation that our university uh, have been like awarded among few to be independent uh, university and standalone mm -hmm. uh, the collaboration in, with the organization could be in terms of the co-op training to our student research to our faculty project consultation and, and much more and we have have gained a lot of having implementing such a standard. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well said. Uh, similarly, Aisha, can I ask you what challenges you experienced at the school level adopting this standard? Well, the greatest challenge was, you know, to get the buy-in of all the leadership team to uh, convincing them that this kind of standard is required to make sure that we are more, uh, you know, process driven rather than person driven. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the challenge was to get people trained and, you know, and then collecting all the data which was scattered around. We were a 20 year old uh, organization, but uh, we, we were running, uh, so to say, very well. But where mm -hmm. was our data? Where was it all, you know, actually mm -hmm. documented? So yeah. we had to collect everything together and put it in one place and make it into a standard document. Super, super. And uh, we had to, we had to also, the, one of the main challenges was to uh, make all stakeholders realize that this was not a fault finding uh, mission. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. actually just to see if we were going right or wherever we were going wrong, we needed to correct ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Very well said. Thank you so much. And uh, no changes without challenges. And that's why the joy is. And then you, when you succeed, you look back, it's all worth it, you know. Very well said. Thank you so much. Now, I got just a couple of uh, questions left now. What kind of benefit or an impact an organization has received or can expect by adopting this? You know, 
I remember my early days, 20, 30 years before, just ISO procedures, documentation. But what is really the end goal or impact? So if I can start with Dr. Ashok Chopta, since he has good industry perspective also, why should the organization really go about and what tangible outcomes it can receive? Uh, thank you, Mr. Sunil. Uh, see, for any industry, for any institution, for any business, for any professional organization, the most important is the paying customer. We may call yes. it a customer, we may call it a stakeholder, we may call anything, but without payment, nothing moves. Yeah. And I feel once we go for any standardization, once we go for any quality program, the, our customer, our stakeholder is assured I am dealing with systems and not people. Tomorrow, if somebody leaves, I will not be left in between. And I am assured of what they promised me to deliver, they will deliver it. And that what makes the difference between a certified organization or non-certified organization. There are a lot of non-certified organizations or those who don't go for any program accreditation. We feel as a stakeholder, the university or the institution or the organization has to convince them a lot that Absolutely. please buy my product. It is something like a difference between pull strategy and a push strategy. Mm -hmm. So accreditations or program like this create a pull for your product or for your institution, whereas all other you need to push and in push, yeah. And never be assured of the quality. Yeah, yeah. sustainability. Like, sir, I would like to give. Very good. Thank you. Very well said. Uh, can I ask the same question to Dr. Ahmed also? What kind of benefit or an impact one can expect? Uh, I, I will just like brief this in like a, a point. Uh, the implementation of this standard could like give us like better alignment with educational goal and action plan mm -hmm. that we have already set it to our programs. And of course, we will enable the education, the quality education for all, like through all the, the courses and section, mm -hmm. uh, the consistent, uh, consistent process and evaluation tool to increase the efficiency of um, multiple section. Mm -hmm. And of course, the increase the, uh, the credibility of educational organization by mm -hmm. adopting this standard. Very good, very well said, very precise. Uh, doctor, can I ask you, did you see the learning outcomes being improved with the students, learners, after having implemented this? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, like having said like the quality process is consistent between the multiple section, having like a better like uh, outcome between the different section allow mm -hmm. us like better uh, or, or like we have Notice a better outcome. Excellent, beautiful. Uh, Aisha ji, what are your views on the impact and yeah. the benefit? My answer is long in this because we've got a lot. Of <laughs> okay, you got two minutes because. Yeah, this so, okay, the first of all, um, it helped you know uh, cascade the vision and mission to the last employee. There was they brought about consistency in the whole organization. The EOMS, you know, helped uh, cascade the mission and vision down because. We formulated an EOMS with all our core ideologies and vision, mission and mind related to uh, every process, stuck it up everywhere in the school. So, you know, uh, even, even uh, uh, you know, support staff knows about it and, you know, mm -hmm. and follows the same mission and vision. Very then, nice. uh, it has helped to make the organization process driven rather than person driven, like I've mm -hmm. said. Uh, so that ensures succession planning. So teaching and learning, achieving learning outcomes throughout the school through a student achievement tracker, which our yeah. principal made after this. And yeah. it ensures uh, equitability, not ignoring special needs. Absolutely. In the present pandemic, uh, you know, online teaching scenario, it helped us modify the curriculum, truncated because the government did not allow much teaching time through all yeah. that. We truncated it, made it concept based and made sure that uh, none of the learners had any gaps. Beautiful. And where assessment and examinations uh, was concerned, we uh, ensure uh, it ensures the, the system ensures equitability, fairness, and mitigates malpractice. Okay, excellent. And social responsibility, uh, it uh, involves social responsibility by catering to all types of learners, stakeholders, whatever their background. 
Yeah. Then performance stacking system of staff for a 360 degree approval, which our you know our mm -hmm. HR department has taken. Yes. Yeah. Then risk management, which was so far overlooked. For yes. Yes. Yeah. Process. We have a contingency plan in place now. After this. Excellent. Yeah. Then grievance redressal earlier was not a focus. Now all we make sure that all stakeholders are satisfied by going through the whole process. A grievance hmm. redressal according to the ISO standards. Excellent, yeah. And then uh, the the facilities department helped formulate a policy and process for every department, health yeah. and uh, safety and canteen and everything mm -hmm. else. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then um, uh, we have uh, we have data security where there is a backup for data uh, where the backup uh, you know made for the data security and uh, we make sure that you know. We have a cloud backup as well as a hard copy of our, uh, of our data, and then we did CPD. That's continuous professional development goes on, which is taken care of my by my uh, core trustee, who which uh, you know coaches teachers uh, with the help of mentors and uh, and men, uh, with the help of a mentor mentee system. I see, excellent. Yeah. So that way we we have a full three sixty degree uh, you know development of the whole organization to make sure the whole system is well oiled. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. If you allow me, I'd like to stop here and start the conversation with the attendees. We are at two fifty. So, if you allow me, I'll just open the chat and look at some of the questions we have comments we have received. So, first is from R A H to everyone. Where can we find more details about the standard? The standard, if I can allow reply to this, is available from. ISO website www.iso.ch. You can go there and buy the standard, or you can go to your country's standards authority or organization. They will have it. Yeah, right, yeah. Then uh, there's a compliment from Dr. Ala from England. Dr. Glad, many thanks, Arthi. Please know you. Greetings from Al Marefa. Nice to know. Nice to know. I'm from Durban University in Technology. Very nice to have somebody from South Africa. Uh, Fawaz, Dr. Fawzi, does the standard discuss the measuring education quality outcomes and indicators? Uh, who would like to take this? Uh, Arti would like to take this question. Yeah, sure, sure. So, Dr. Fawzi, and, and I have a proof of concept for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so Dr. Fauzi's question is going to help everyone else out there. So the standard uh, doesn't discuss the uh, how to measure the educational outcomes or indicators, but standard emphasizes on the evidence-based approach. So yeah. for all the decision making that you do in your organization, you need a lot of data and the outcome-based approach. You don't take any decisions unless it is backed by appropriate data. Then also. Uh, standard is focusing a lot on your summative assessments. All your assessments and evaluations have to be linked with the learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. Your blueprints of your assessments have to be linked with the skills that you have tried to build up uh, through your courses, through your curriculum, your syllabi that you're using. And uh, measurement of the learning outcomes indirectly becomes an integral feature of the standard. Okay. Very good, yeah. Uh, I have another question from Mr. Sohail Anwar. What are the major things that should be taken care of while implementing this standard? Aisha, do would you like to attempt this? Respond to this? Well, like I uh, like I said earlier, you have to get a buy-in of all the stakeholders. Where you have a you know the uh, leadership team and all other stakeholders telling them that this is not a fault-finding mission again. And you know, so uh, they need to know that we are here to create standards to make the education better. Once you get the buy-in, and then you have to, you know, uh, collect all the data that so far you've been working on, yeah. and make a process for every aspect of your organization. Absolutely. Yeah. And first, uh, first and foremost, get your staff who are going to do it trained. Absolutely. I would say the topmost leadership. Uh, Willingness to do is the top most priority as far as the implementation of ISO standard is concerned in any organization. Yes, yeah. yes. I would totally agree with Dr. Chopra yeah. here. Yeah. So leadership is the focal point of the standard. It has to flow from top to down. 
So unless the leaders show their commitment, their involvement, I have seen uh, in the last 23 years that I've been associated with the education sector, schools, colleges, universities, L&D training institutions everywhere. The successful ones who have been able to reap the maximum benefits from implementation of the standard are the ones where the leadership is involved. Absolutely. Very well said. I mean, it goes without saying. Uh, just a quick one minute, Dr. Ahmed, any thoughts on you for Sohail's yes. question? I, I can add my, uh, my like, uh, experience with, with uh, having this standard implemented. Uh, engagement of people was a slight challenge at that time of the implementation while mapping the standard requirement with our system uh, since we were just like a small department getting certified, most of the work was done by two to three persons who had some prior knowledge of the ISO 9001. And this is like very important things to have some of the prior peoples in your team uh, of, of the different standard that will add on and help. Uh, we, should have, we should like have involved the other department during implementation so that the coordination would have been easier and would could ensure more efficiency. Yeah. Um, and also kind of like present the difference between um, the EOMS, like the 2001, uh, two, uh, two, two, one, the ISO, and the other uh, implemented standard in organization. Integration, yeah. Yes. Very well said. Okay, I will just take one last question. Uh, uh, or maybe two, two was one is from Madhu Sumita from Dubai. How does this standard help holistic development of a child with fact-based evidence? Good question. Who would like to take this? So I can take this up. Yeah. Uh, Madhu Sumita, this is a very nice question. Uh, unlike any accreditation mechanism, say, for example, if you are from the school uh, sector, in the school sector, there is a regulation called either a central board of secondary education or you have the IB board, the Cambridge board. So you have to adopt the regulation. Similarly, in higher education, we have NAC, we have NBA, we have EBIT. Uh, we have various other accreditations in different countries. They are country-specific accreditations. So most of these accreditations are the compliances that are needed. They are the regulations. Now, when we are talking about a certification standard, which is a voluntary standard, it has been developed by more than uh, 100 experts from all across the world, and the standards are being revised every five years. So a lot of thought process is going into it. The uh, focal point is the learner. So everything that we are doing in the education organization, why we are implementing these standards is because we are a learner-focused organization. So the outcomes of the learners are the most important aspects for us, right? And all the data that you would collate in your educational institution, whether it is coming from your administrative activities or from your uh, teaching and learning core academic processes, all this data is going to feed into your decision making for enhancing the learning outcomes of your students through either competency, uh, competence of your educators or through robustness of your assessment parameters or engagement of uh, various stakeholders. Everything is focused on learner. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll just give opportunity to Dr. Ala from, uh, I have... Uh... Doctor, can you speak? You put some uh, yes. couple of uh, comments on the... Yeah, hello everyone. I'm, I'm glad to be with you. Thank you very much, Sunil, and thank you for my colleagues in the panel. Uh, quickly, I just um, uh, did some exercise for a university in Egypt to be uh, listed in the QS uh, rating uh, and, and helping them now with the ranking. And uh, I, I see um, in the Middle East in specific, they want to improve their uh, reputation. I mean, the university's reputation and compete internationally. Uh, at the same time, I just finished an uh, awareness course on, on higher education quality where I covered some parts of ISO 20001. I see a fantastic link between ISO 20001 and QS rating and ranking requirements. Not only QS, I mean also uh, Shanghai and uh, Webometrics. Uh, so um, what I suggest, I mean, from organizational point of view, uh, if, 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 you, if you are able to present them and show the integration between uh, the standard and the their, their indicators. And, and also there is a business opportunity in this as well. Uh, it, will, it is win-win for everyone. I mean, for, 
for the service provider and also for the higher education institutions. Uh, the same can happen with the linkage between the ISO and the EFQM and similar standards. So I just wanted to uh, mention this. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you. Steve, for giving me the Thank opportunity. Can, Thank I you, add, can I add something? To I'll go to conclusion now. I mean, you know, we are just uh, in the concluding remarks, uh, RTG can add, uh, if you allow me. Mm, you see, this is the image of the standard. You know, I thought I'll just share with you. Some of you may know this. Anyway, uh, it's a typical uh, traditional framework and structure we have. Now, we went through the Q&A. Now, before we conclude and wrap up, I will request each panelist just take about a minute to share their concluding thoughts. Uh, let me start with uh, Dr. Chopra first. Any concluding thoughts before we wrap up? Sure, sure, Mr. Sunil. I feel uh, you look from any angle. I take a 360 degree of approach, which ultimately brings to a zero, so-called a wheel, which is the sign of movement and the sign of motion and the progress. I feel a standard like this brings the measure, measurable, tangible outcome of the ch child, which is important to every parent in terms of, yes, I am not carrying only a report card, but I am carrying my responsibility where I'm bringing my child who's able to grow 360 degree in all the directions. And I feel this is that standard which brings that. That's my concluding remark. Very good, well said. Uh, now, can I request Dr. Ahmed to share his concluding comments? Yes, sure. I will just like summarize it in two points. The enhance of efficiency, of educational efficiency. Mm -hmm and to promote better repetition for the program and, of course, back to the department. Beautiful. Very well said, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Aisha, please. Yeah, uh, being the founder of an organization or institution, you would always like the institution to live far beyond you. So mm -hmm. this kind of, you know, uh, approach which makes it more process-driven rather than person-driven ensures that, you know, there are, there's an al alignment between the requirements of the people engaged by the organizations and those who are served uh, uh, by it, that are served by it, those who are running it and those who are served by it. So it, it ensures collaborative leadership, it ensures accountability and empowerment, and uh, it, uh, uh, it develops and improves the capability of the organization and its people who deliver the desired results. And uh, after all this, it ensures uh, equality, equability of all, fun uh, all uh, functions and stakeholders, which leads to scalability, sustainability, and legacy creation. Yeah, beautiful. You remind me of Dr. Stephen Covey's to learn, to love, to live, and leave a legacy. Well said. Uh, Artiji, you are the last one. You've got a couple of minutes on the conclusion, concluding remarks, please. I think Sunilji, in order to finish the program well on time, uh, I would cut down on this. And most of the <laughs> so other we started three, four minutes late. Don't worry. The most I of just... the panel members have already covered, I think, all the important points. We all can see and whatever we've learned today during this one hour during all the interactions. I think we all have understood that the standard is going to help you to establish consistency. Uh, it is going to ensure continual improvement, a continual improvement process uh, across the organization and enhanced risk management. You will learn to manage your risks better. And of course, we will be able to develop these skills that are going to drive the employability of our future generation that is going to lead to productivity, health, well-being. Uh, social responsibility and whatnot. So I would say this is this particular standard is a very good combination of various other management system standards. This one being a standalone uh, management system standard is still focusing on all the key aspects of the management standards. So let us try not to dilute uh, the importance of this standard and implement it in the letter and spirit and get the best results out of this implementation so that the whole mankind can be benefited. Thank Beautiful. you. So much. Very well said. Thank you, Artiji. Uh, I'll have the last say. Uh, I just want to share one personal experience. Way back in 1998, I used to go 
and teach an MBA program here in Dubai. At the end of the day, one of the students, uh, Fatima, she was the MBA program uh, student. You now she presented me a very nice small CD. Those days, you know, CDs were in vogue of musician, pianist, Yani. Till that I have never heard Yani's work and I just loved it. Below that CD, there was a small note. You know, that note said, teachers are like candles. They burn to give light to others. So with this, I would like to really thank uh, all of you, Dr. Arti, Dr. Ashok, Dr. Ahmed, and Dr. Aisha for a wonderful contribution. You brought beautiful perspectives, insights, length and breadth of the standard, right from early childhood to 360 degree development, governance, risk, stakeholders, role of industry and everything. And also my sincere thanks to all the attendees. I see a lot of my friends and acquaintances. Some I have not met, for example, Vikram in Mauritius and Allah there and many other people, Gidon from Israel and many other parts of the world. Hope to see you all somewhere someday. Thank you so much. If you need any support in adopting or implementing or improving the standard, feel free to reach out to me or Aarti or other panel members. Wish you all a good day. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we can uh, log out here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Aarti. Thank you, Sunilji. And uh, Thank thanks. You. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Sunil and Aarti. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Arti, Ashok, uh, Dr. Ahmed, Aisha, do you want to meet among us for five minutes? Yes, we can for five minutes. Yeah. 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 After once everybody logs out. Uh, Neha, can you take care of that? Yes, sir. Have we, yeah, are we just among us or we still have participants? Yeah. 